All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Sure Wireless Release Roundup webinar sponsored by TC Furlong. We are happy that you could all join us today. Uh, but before we get started, I'd like to make some quick introductions. Uh, first off, I'm Brian Grand with the TC Furlong sales and marketing team. Uh, for those not familiar, TC Furlong is a Chicago area based live sound company. We handle equipment sales, rentals, live event production, and a handful of other services, including system design, repairs, and more. Uh, today, we are joined by Sean McLaughlin with Audio Biz and Jason Waffle with Sure Pro Audio Division. Hey, everybody. How's it going, uh, guys? Before we dive into it, I do have a few announcements. Uh, we are recording today's webinar and we'll be posting later on our YouTube page. Uh, a link will be sent out to all registrants after we have uh, processed and posted that video. Uh, we will not be monitoring the chat section of today's webinar for questions. Uh, if you have questions, please submit them through the Q&A section. And last, uh, we have a planned Q&A section at the end of today's webinar, but please submit your questions as we go. We can prioritize some questions to pose over the course of the webinar as well. All right, with that being said, first off, I'm gonna hand it over to Sean with AudioBiz to talk about SLXD Wireless. Hopefully you guys are seeing my video. <laughs> uh, not yet there, Sean. Not yet. Uh, dang it. What did I do? Nope. No love. This is, why, this is why you're an audio guy. This is why I'm an audio guy. Exactly. <laughs> this um, is it. It's a good thing this is a webinar on wireless and not on how to run a Zoom meeting. It's just kidding. Give, give me filler for a second. <laughs> Hold on. I see a fantastic foe of you. Look at that. You... Uh, Who's the character from Game of Thrones? I'm sure you get that all the time. I do get that one all the time. Good Lord, my thing's not we got a, working. We got a couple, of, a couple of red beards. Hold on one second. I just got to reboot something quick. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Boy, in the five minutes that we tested this and got live, it managed yeah. to break. I love it. I'm sure that uh, this is less trouble than some of the teachers are having nationwide trying to figure out how to get their kids in a virtual classroom today. At least uh, I know I know a few teachers that went back to school today, so they've had some fun. Uh, uh, you know, Brian, thanks for the intro, everybody. While we're killing some time here, thank you guys for being here. We uh, hopefully hopefully everybody's staying safe and healthy. It's been quite the year, and uh, I think under normal circumstances, we'd be trying to do this in person somewhere or come to see you guys. There he is. So uh, <laughs> thanks for the 2020 pivot and uh, jumping on this virtual virtual release if you will all yeah, right we're Sean. Really happy that you guys could be here with us yeah man absolutely awesome i am ready to go fire away buddy you look great cool so i get the pleasure of uh introducing uh the newest uh wireless to the sure lineup the slxd so we're gonna give kind of a quick run through um go into a little bit of an overview get into all the different components and then we'll do some uh camera show and tell uh and some of the uh menu structure which is actually one of the really coolest things that uh is about this system so let's let's jump right into it um the SLXD, you know, it's the newest lineup uh, of the digital wireless that Sure has to offer. Uh, super robust performance, uh, just like all of the other Sure uh, digital wireless that we have, full 20 to 20K uh, frequency response. It is a UHF band product, uh, so keep that in mind. It's not uh, in any of the other different frequency bands. Um, and it is a digital wireless, so it gives you, you know, awesome, awesome audio quality, which is obviously what Sure is known for. So um, it's a pretty cool system, uh, super easy to use. We'll go through some of the menu structure. Um, that's one of the things I really like about this. Um, it's got very easy to use buttons. Um, the guided frequency setup is one of the coolest uh, things for being able to scan for your system. 
Uh, really simple, easy uh, to use menu structure. And one of the kind of the coolest things, if you ever get in the weeds with uh, this system, you've got the ability to actually use a QR code to get through the uh, owner's manual right on online. So it's a, a pretty cool system. From a spectral efficiency of kind of where this sits, um, you're looking at about 32 uh, channels per frequency band. There's three different bands available uh, in the system. I've got a slide coming up here that kind of shows all the different breakdowns, but you're looking at about 10 channels per six megahertz uh, space. Of, so like a DTV uh, space of six megahertz, I can get up to 10 channels on there. So it's uh, super robust there. Um, coming in a little bit uh, under our QLXD and ULXD, um, in uh, uh, spectral efficiency. So I've got a slide that kind of compares them later on also. Um, again, we are using the full UHF spectrum um, with all the different frequency bands that we've got. So we've got you covered no matter where you are in the country. So. Um, component wise, um, really kind of a new design. So the transmitters are um, a, a new design product. Um, handhelds are all metal, uh, so very robust. Uh, the body packs are uh, an ABS uh, um, plastic uh, that's designed to make it ultra lightweight and, and super comfortable. Um, chassis are an all metal chassis, so it's a really nice uh, robust system here. So let's kind of dive in. So it's got a, a pretty straightforward buttons. There's three buttons on each uh, each unit, an exit, a sync, uh, and then a scroll menu button to, to go through. Um, there is also a new uh, uh, display on there, so it's really easy to read all of the um, menu structure and everything. Even when you're outside, it's a really bright system. So we'll show you that on the, the video there. Um, it does uh, scale really well. So we've got uh, single receivers and dual receivers, um, and it has uh, the dual receivers actually have internal antenna combining, so it reduces the amount of uh, distribution that you might need if you're dealing with a lot of different channels. Um, a really good uh, spectral efficiency, like we've talked about, uh, so we can handle good high channel counts. Um, like you can with a lot of the other digital wireless. Um, and the group scan is pretty cool. Um, we'll again show you that later. It allows you to scan and set up um, for all of your system. And one of the unique features that the SLXD has, it actually allows you to scan across multiple frequency bands, which is something that we haven't had with uh, like QLXD and ULXD. So that's something that's pretty cool. Um, it does have a network port on the back. Um, so there is some ability for doing external control if you've got this installed than like you know, with a Crestron system or Extron or QSIS or something like that. Um, also allows for uh, updates to the units for firmware uh, through the network uh, ports. Um, I am gonna throw this out here right now. It is not uh, compatible with uh, Workbench. Uh, that's probably a question that we'll get. Um, uh, but uh, they do network together for allowing the, the group uh, scans, which we'll show you in a little bit. Um, we do have rechargeable options uh, for this wireless, the SLXD. So this is actually a new battery. Um, if you're familiar with any of the other systems from Sure QLXD and ULXD, we had the SB900. Uh, it's a great battery. It's super robust. I really highly recommend if you are running a lot of wireless, look into a rechargeable battery solution. Um, but SLXD actually has a new battery uh, designed specifically for this system. Uh, it brings the price point down quite a bit. Uh, so it really allows you to get into that rechargeable system uh, at a lower price point, which is really awesome. So we'll break that down in a little bit. But let's kind of dive into some of the specs here. So um, we'll follow this uh, uh, the webinar up with uh, a couple of these slides here so you can look at some of the specs. Um, but kind of like we were talking about, um, you've got a wide tuning range, um, very low latency uh, for a digital uh, system here, um, really long runtime, eight plus hours with that rechargeable battery, which is pretty awesome. Um, and you do have the ability to run all of the different capsules and um, options that sure has. Um, um, and then with rechargeability, we also have some different options, which we'll go through here of uh, docks and a compact charger. So it makes it uh, very flexible. 
So the SLXD4, which is our single um, channel receiver, uh, very familiar with this setup. Uh, if you're used to using QLXD, uh, it's a similar design. Um, comes with all the rack hardware that you need to be able to mount a single channel or, or a dual channel, so that's uh, pretty good. Uh, you can see on the back, we do have uh, balanced XLR and quarter inch uh, options. So depending on how you wanna hook into your system, you've got that covered. Again, that network jack, um, power, uh, and then our um, antenna attachments there. Um, this uses a quarter wave antenna. Those do come with the units, um, but it is compatible with all of the other Sure um, wideband antennas uh, you know, that we've got out there. Uh, the SLXD4D uh, is a dual uh, channel unit. So as you can see, it kind of puts two channels in a single rack mount, um, does that internal antenna combining, gives you your individual outputs, pretty much uh, a dual unit, uh, just like a lot of the other Sure um, options there. But this does allow a little bit uh, less power supplies and things in the rack um, if you are looking at multiple channels there. Uh, so the SLXD1 body pack, uh, like we mentioned, is a new design. Um, so it is an ABS uh, plastic shell, so it makes it very lightweight. It's got some nice rounded corners to it, design cues that were actually pulled from our Axient micro body pack. Um, so it makes it very ergonomic when it's on the body. Um, as you'll notice there, there is the charging contact. So this does work with our charging docks uh, if you are wanting to use um, the rechargeable batteries. Um, you do also have a couple output uh, uh, levels for RF, uh, you got a one in a 10 milliwatt. So um, pretty good there with uh, with that. Um, there is also OLED screens on the uh, transmitters. So again, very bright and easy to read, um, very sharp uh, imagery there. And we'll show that on the camera in a minute. Um, the SLXD2 uh, handheld transmitter, um, it is a new design. Uh, it's not the universal design like we see on some of the other Sure products with QLXD, ULXD, and uh, Axiant AD transmitters. So this is a new new model. Um, we've gone away from the multifunction buttons that were on SLX, so down to a more of a simple um, a simple switch setup here, uh, which is a easy to use on off button and then separate menu buttons. Um, again, OLED display, the charging links. Um, and there are uh, various different heads that you can get. It uses any of the Sure heads uh, that you can swap those out uh, as needed or order them um, with the head that you would like uh, with the system. The rechargeable battery, I kind of mentioned this before, um, so it's a new uh, lithium ion. This has a lot of uh, the same uh, technology that's in the SB900, so it gives you a lot of the battery telemetry and the smart technology. So you can get hours and minutes um, readout uh, on your receivers, um, and that's accurate within plus or minus 15 minutes. Um, and that actually gets a little bit better with uh, age as the battery learns its chemistry and everything. Um, gives you really accurate uh, channel counts so you know when those batteries need to be changed. Um, it is a lithium ion, so there is no memory effect, which is really awesome. Um, and you're gonna get really long life out of these guys. So I really highly recommend going uh, rechargeable batteries with uh, you know any of the Sure products that, that offer it. Uh, it's, it's a real change in your workflow and saves a lot of, a lot of time and also saves the environment because you're not uh, burning through a whole bunch of batteries, which is, which is really good. For charging options for the batteries, we've actually got a couple different options. We've got the SBC10903 here, which is a single battery charger. So this is for anyone that's aimed, that's really trying to keep this small footprint. You know, a lot of the gigging musicians that may be having this uh, needing quick rechargeability and ease of use. Um, this allows you to charge uh, that single battery. Uh, it uses a USB-C port, uh, so your cell phone charger, anything like that. Um, if you uh, don't have one handy, you can charge it. You can even plug it into your uh, cigarette lighter in your car uh, and charge it on the way to the gig there. So that's, that's a pretty kind of a cool thing um, there. We also have a dock um, option here. Um, if my slide will advance. Now my slide is not advancing. Oh, come on. Oh. Now I'm frozen. Yeah, Sean, looks like we got your uh, your video frozen here as well. I'm yeah, my I'm totally frozen. My computer is frozen. 
Well, uh, so we have a charging dock here available um, that allows you to slot uh, two different chargers in it, whether it's the body pack or handheld. Um, and then uh, you can also charge individual batteries um, through that unit there. Um, and uh, that was kind of the run through of the product. And if I get my computer to stop uh, freezing, I can actually switch some camera stuff. Maybe not. I'm dead in the water, guys. Uh oh, <laughs> all right. Uh, Sean, why don't we uh, bump over to Jason? Yeah, let's do that. And, and Jason can talk a little bit about some of the new Axiom Digital options. What's up, here everybody? Uh, yeah, we can pivot to that, um, I suppose. That was we're, we're getting cut a little bit short here on this SLXD situation. I can kind of, I suppose, pick up where, where Sean left for just a moment um, just to, to kind of finish that out, I suppose, and, and maybe give him a minute to catch his breath here. Uh, nice start. Came out of the gates a little slow. Caught up pretty nicely, and now we're <laughs> pumping the brakes again. No worries, Sean. Um, so, yeah, there's a single rechargeable dock that, that, that you're seeing here from Sean. Um, and and in, in addition to that, there is kind of the docking bays that, that we're used to seeing with um, – uh, ULXD and QLXD and, and even AD. So there's the two port bays um, that we should have a slide for, but uh, doesn't appear we can get that to change. I'm trying to load mine right now. It's today's got all kinds of problems. Um, additionally, I, I know he mentioned earlier there were three bands uh, G58, H55, and J52 are the three bands for that. Uh, the G58 is 470 to 514. H55 is 514 to 588. Uh, and then J52 is 558 all the way up to 616. So it does play with that uh, lower guard band um, if you're familiar with the FCC auction. So essentially between those three bands, you get the entire UH, legal UHF spectrum um, that you can operate in as an unlicensed user. Um, so uh, pretty pretty large spectrum chunks from what we're used to seeing, what we, we did see back with UHFR even where there was quite a few different chunks um, for that same space. Um, in the ecosystem uh, where this lives, if you're familiar with the, the Sure products, um, we're I hate to say replacing SLX because that product was so successful at its price point for so long, but we, we took the good things from SLX obviously and added a bunch to it and made it digital. So um, it's kind of SLXD followed up by, and then QLXD, ULXD and Axiom Digital at the top. Um, if you were going to tier these out um, and the pricing and features kind of reflect that as well. Uh, so if you, if you're looking for more information on uh, pricing, um, or things like that, we can, we can get with you um, specifically later on, uh, or we can answer some of those questions if you're interested. Um, let's see. I can move on, I suppose. Uh, great job on the SLXD. We're pretty excited about that. It's super rugged. Uh, you know, you, you saw the pictures of the, the hand mic earlier there. It's, it's an all-metal hand mic. It's not, um, it's not the, uh, the old SLX style. Sean, looks like you're back of sorts. Um, I've got a question in here from Lewis says, what single band is recommended? I only need four wireless mics and four in-ears. Do I get the in-ears in a different band than the mics? Um, so it's, it's a great question. It's um, with that few wireless, you know, you're four and four with a total channel of eight. Um, you probably could get away with putting them in the same band. Um, the, the, the first thing you got to do when you try to answer that question is understand what your environment looks like. Um, if you can, so take a scan of your area and try to figure out what your DTV looks like in your space and what competing wireless is happening in your area. But initially, essentially with just with eight mics, you should be fine with, um, getting some G58 SLXD and even some G10, um, PSMs, um, and putting those, putting those in there. There's plenty of room, uh, plenty of room for eight transmitters in that much spectrum. Um, Best practices is probably always to keep your ears away from your mics, and that just helps with inner mods. Um, so essentially, you, it would be probably a little bit better to try to get a different band for your ears than your mics. Um, but again, the first thing you really want to do before you purchase, if you can, is try to get a, a scan of your space um, and, and really see what RF is existing in your environment. Um, 
Great question. Shawnee, back, buddy? I am back. Would you like to pick up where you left off? Sure. I'll just uh, quick uh, quick show a couple more things. There's, there we go. There's the band graphic. Fantastic. There's the band graphic, since we were just talking about frequencies. Yeah. Um, so we've got the three different uh, bands, G58, H55, and then the J52. Um, and you will notice that uh, the J52 also covers up in that 614 to 616 um, open space that we've got there in the gap band um, that we were able to operate uh, wireless mics in. So that kind of shows you what, uh, what we've got from a frequency perspective um and then the uh, one dang it did i freeze again nope all right cool i didn't um this is kind of a slide that we'll send this out afterwards but really this gives you kind of a good uh overview of what uh the lineup looks like from slxd qlxd ulxd and our axiant digital um so it kind of gives everything a good side-by-side -side comparison to figure out what would be the best for for your needs so um, that was really it from the slideshow and now we can actually kind of show some stuff. Um, so we are back here. Uh, let me switch to my other camera and just kind of wanted to show some of the uh, different transmitters. So um, obviously we've got the, uh, the handheld transmitter, like we mentioned, it's all metal. Um, metal uh, battery cup which is awesome if you were a former slx user and you know how many battery cups you've gone through so um this has got the rechargeable battery in there it does fit in one way um so that's a, a really nice uh, improvement there you also don't have to have uh the uh clip on the inside for when you're reusing rechargeable batteries or the double a's which is pretty nice uh, and then you've also got a really nice oled display so really simple easy controls on off switch uh, menu buttons and enter buttons so it's really easy to navigate don't have to worry about multi multi-function buttons the handheld or uh, body pack, I guess I should say, like we mentioned before, has a nice little ergonomic rounded corners. So it's really nice when it's on the body. It does have the charging contacts in the front uh, for the dock. Um, again, easy battery tray to get into. It's also tethered so you don't lose the, the back uh, battery option there. Um, your menu buttons are on the side uh, and then your IR sync is on the other side. It's a little hard to see in the light there. You can kind of see it um, for your IR sync. Um, and then connector on top and then again that also that uh, easy on off switch so making it super uh, easy to uh, turn on and off uh, and then this is just showing the docking uh, charger here so again USB-C um, you can also put uh, just batteries in the top uh, if you want to and not necessarily uh, dock your transmitters um, just like QLXD and ULXD this have the ability to when I when I put it in the dock it'll automatically turn off the unit and charge uh, and then as soon as I pull it out I can be up on air so this makes it really uh, helpful especially for you know like corporate work house of worship anything where you can leave transmitters on the side of the stage and really be able to get up and running really quick. So I did want to quick run you through a couple of the menu things here to show you how easy this system is to operate. Um, so what we're going to do is kind of show you how this system works and how it does a scan because that's one of the uh, unique things here. Um, so we're going to dive in. I'm going to press the multifunction wheel and we're going to go to our frequency setup. Um, and this is going to allow you to do uh, what's called a guided setup, um, which is a kind of a wizard uh, for frequency scanning. So we'll show you how that works. If you click into there, um, it's going to give you two options. It's going to give you the one to initialize my system, which is going to be a new system that's being set up. Or if you already have existing SLXD and you add a channel or two, you can actually go in and say, add an additional receiver to my system. And it's going to calculate what your frequencies already are on your established units um, and then find uh, the best frequencies for uh, the additional channels. So since we're starting up a new system, we're just going to hit initialize. It's going to give me a little warning saying that this is going to um, go through and do a group scan. Let's press that. Uh, it gives you a warning again, turn off all your transmitters in your space to make sure you get a clean airspace. Uh, and then we're going to start the scan and it's going to go through and do a group scan. I've got three channels set up here that are all networked together uh, and it's going to find the best frequencies for all of those units. Um, so you'll notice it, it recognized that I have three receivers. Um, there's 34 channels available um, based off of its scan and I can click assign 
and it's going to deploy those to the unit. So pretty easy to do. Uh, gives me a warning next that I need to sync my transmitter. So if we grab my handheld here, do a sync. Hard to do this in front of the camera. And we've got that successful. So now you can see that I've got uh, audio passing through here. So a couple other nice things. Um, again, I'm using the rechargeable batteries, so you can see the hours and minutes that are available on the battery, um, the frequency band, um, also a name up here that you can change. Um, one of the cool things I like if you scroll down is actually uh, to set up your gain structure on here. So uh, if you go into the gain menu, what this does is it gives you an optimal bracket of when I'm talking into the microphone, this is where my audio should be. So you'll notice if I crank this down, I'm not quite in the optimal bracket. So I'd want to get that, that I'm kind of averaging in the middle of that optimal bracket. If you go up too loud, it'll give you an overload warning. So you're distorting your audio at that point um, and you can kind of crank that back down. So it's a pretty unique feature um, to give you that proper gain structure. It makes it really easy for setup. Um, also, I've got the ability to change between mic and line level on the unit. Um, I can go in under advanced features and lockout menus, set up um, transmitter access. Um, I can also set up presets, which is pretty cool. Um, so if I've got settings on a whole bunch of transmitters, I can sync and have those settings uh, recalled uh, in the system. And then also the same with a, a device preset. So. Makes a pretty easy system. And then I mentioned this before, there is a cool help menu on here. This is a new feature that Sure has done. Pops up a little QR code um, that with your smartphone, if you're in need of help or getting to the manual quickly, you can uh, just scan that uh, QR code. So makes it pretty easy. So that's uh, kind of it for the overview on the uh, SLXD. That's great. Do we have any questions popping up? Sean, I've got a question for you. Yeah. Um, similar to some other uh, handhelds, can you reprogram the uh, on or off button to be a lock mode? Yeah, so you've got that in the menu structure, so you can lock that out, uh, especially if you're using the docking chargers. As soon as you put it in the dock, it's gonna turn off and you're, you're good to go when you pull it right back out. That's great. Hey, Sean, when, are, when is this product shipping? Um, it is actually shipping right now. You can place your orders and get stuff. That's the best part. Uh, a launch with product available. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, I've got another one here for you, Sean. What are the options for different capsules for the SLXD system? You know, I would have to look that up. I don't remember off the top of my head. A lot of your typical suspects with uh, Beta 58, uh, SM58, um, the, I believe KSM8 and KSM9 are options. Um, and then uh, a couple of EP capsules, Beta 87. So, yeah, so um, as far as what you can order it with, I think is that what you're talking about, Sean? In yeah. Package-wise, yeah. I, I don't know exactly how we've got them packaged with what capsules, but... But the, the, the stick mic itself is the standard RPW. So any, any RPW um, standard capsule will work. Um, I, I'm trying to remember exactly what we have packaged available. But if you have a standard SM58 or a KSM8 or a KSM9 or, or any, any RPW capsule that's, that's in your inventory currently or any RPW that you want will thread onto that, that hand, hand mic and work and function. Um, so whether, whether you get it without a capsule and then purchase that capsule separately, or you get it in a package, um, I'm not, I can't remember all the packages we have built. Yeah, there's quite, <laughs> there's, there's a ton, there's a ton of packages for this product. We've got, we've got some pretty cool guitar setups and stuff as well for it. So yeah. go ahead. Beta, beta 58, beta 87, KSM eight, uh, SM 58 and yeah. uh, beta 58. Yeah, buddy. Options. Oh, no, wait. Nope. Sorry. It keeps on going. Yeah, that's about it. I was going to say the yeah, list, the the list is long. <laughs> All right, Sean, I've got a kind of techie question that actually came in through the chat here. Um, regarding the gain setting on the receiver, is that moving bar showing only output gain or is it an input gain from the transmitter? That's actually the input gain from the transmitter. Great question. Yeah. And so that the, the second part of that does the handheld sense have a sensitivity setting for various capsules or would that be the same uh, gain setting that you would adjust for the sensitivity based on? Yeah, the exactly. That's, that's where you're going to be adjusting that with that gain setting. 
That's great. Good question. Great. Um, well, let's uh, move on to you, Jason, and we can talk a little bit about some of the new Axiom Digital products that were released here. Yeah, absolutely. Sean, thank you. Uh, thank you for handing the SLXD there. We're pretty excited about that product. Um, so I appreciate you going through that. We're going to do a little pivot here to, um, uh, as, uh, as Brian mentioned, some Axiom Digital additions, if you will. Um, so I'm going to dive into that here. Uh, if you're not familiar uh, with Axiom Digital, I'll give you just a, a brief little recap here to start off. Um, this is kind of the system um, as it was designed initially. So uh, Axiom Digital is our flagship top tier wireless product. Um, uh, it's been around for, geez, four years now? It's been a while. I'm trying to remember the exact date, but um, it is the most advanced wireless that Sure offers. Uh, maybe the most advanced wireless in the world. I'm not sure that I can say that factually, hence the maybe, but it's pretty fantastic. Um, so there's two types of transmitters that come with your AD platform. The first one is going to be AD. You see that in the bottom left. That stands for Axiom Digital, um, and that is the standard top tier transmitter. Uh, the ones in the bottom right is called ADX, and that is where uh, Showlink gets involved. And if you're unfamiliar with Showlink, Showlink is our uh, remote control system that uh, creates a back channel between the transmitter um, and a Showlink and gives you uh, automatic frequency changing and full control of all of your transmitters remotely so you don't have to touch or, or um uh, get get the transmitter back in your possession to make changes. Um, coupled with the spectrum manager, it will manage all of its frequencies on its own. So if you were to take interference, it would resolve that interference in about 70 to 90 milliseconds, um, uh, pretty much remove all audible dropouts. Um, from your system. So that is kind of the quick Axiom digital rundown. We make a quad receiver that you're seeing there on the screen, and then there's a dual as well. Um, if you've got questions about Axiom digital in general, feel free to toss those in. I'm happy to answer those. Uh, but I just wanted to give you a quick, quick overview of, of that product line before we jumped into the new additions that have recently been released, uh, if you're familiar with the line. So we're going to start with the 83. So the 83 is our plug-on transmitter. So this is an Axiom Digital 3. Um, it basically takes any wired audio source and makes it wireless, right? So at the tip there, uh, if you're unfamiliar with the plug-on, that is an XLR connector at the top. Um, and it's gonna take that XLR hardwired audio input and make it wireless. I see this a lot in um, newscasting, uh, remote broadcasters, um, even if you'd like to take some output feeds of a console and make them wireless to a separate place, that's some, some op opportunities as well. So 83 features. Um, the top is a patent pending locking mechanism for a secure Wobble free XLR connection. Um, you see that as you connect that mic at the top, you're going to pull that little threaded collar down and push it to the left and you're going to lock that in to prevent any removal of the input source that you've connected uh, to your 83 plug-on transmitter. Uh, OLED display, uh, rugged metal construction, sealed, water resistant, automatic input staging. So if you're unfamiliar with Axiom Digital, um, it's got about 120 dB of dynamic range built into the digital modulation. What that means for you is that it's pretty much impossible that you're going to clip that um, input range. You're probably going to clip the element long before you clip the modulation scheme. So there's some automatic um, digital input staging that takes place in Axiom Digital um, to give you an uh, exceptional dynamic range in your audio output. Uh, comes with AES 256-bit encryption. So if you've got a client um, or a customer that is looking for an encrypted signal, we're seeing this more and more uh, requests for that becoming more and more common. Um, the 83 has AES 256-bit encryption, as do all of the Axiom digital transmitters. 300 feet minimum line of sight operating range, um, selectable modulation scheme. So we have two modes of modulation on Axiom digital. The first is standard, um, and that gives you your three power settings. The second is what we call high density. Uh, what that does is takes the power down just a little bit on the output of your transmitter, but is going to increase your maximum channel count um, almost exponentially. Uh, additional features on the 83. So you got switchable power, power levels here, 2, 10, and 35 milliwatts. Um, there's a AA battery, two AA batteries that are included. It will also run off of our somewhat standard SB900 rechargeable battery, um, which is different than the one you just saw for XL, SLXD, but is the rechargeable option that works with QLXD, ULXD, and Axiom Digital. <clears throat> 
Uh, you're getting about eight hours of continuous runtime, precision metering, and zero memory effect on that battery, uh, as long as you use the SP900. Uh, and then we've got um, some external power supplies. It also has phantom power, which is pretty large for a plug-on transmitter. It's pretty much a necessity. So it will give you 12 or 48 volt phantom power to power um, a, a condenser mic or, or an out, out input source that requires phantom power. Uh, what's in the box? You get your plug-on transmitter, you get two AA batteries, you get a USB-A to USB-C cable, our famous Sure leather pouch, um, the little leather slide-on houser there with that's got the belt clip on it, um, and that's what comes in the box for your transmitter. So this is pretty cool uh, to get into the power options. I obviously just said that you can use double A's uh, and you can also use the SB900. If you're familiar with that workflow of the SB900 switch out on our other AD transmitters, you know that you have to take this little shim um, that is in place and you can see it in the left picture. There's a little rectangular foam piece there in the center of the door that's open. Um, and that actually gets stored above the double A's there. And you can see that in a second. Um, so we did a little bit of research on, on people people's frustration with losing those shims, we gave you a little spot to store that on this uh, product design. Um, additionally, uh, to power this in another mode is going to be on the bottom, uh, there's a USB-C port. And what's really cool about this is not only will it power the unit, it will also charge a SB900 battery while it's installed. If you have double A's in the unit and you plug it in, it's just going to bypass that SB, that uh, functionality, not send the voltage to the battery input, uh, and just power the module externally. So additionally, if you needed to have a very long runtime, you could power this 83 off of a, uh, uh, you know, a, a battery source, like a, a battery bank. There's the word I'm looking for. Um, and it would almost run like a, a its own UPS. So if that USB-C cable were to come in unplugged and you had an SB900 installed, the power would automatically switch to that SB900 and you would have whatever runtime you have left on that battery until you got it plugged back in or it died. Um, so some power redundancy um, with a, a forward thinking plug there in USB-C. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people don't know about and what we've seen a lot of use in this already is what we call the VPH, it's the video production handheld. Um, and this is essentially, <laughs> we, we make a joke about it, we're making wireless wired again with the VPH. The VPH is the stick, this, you know, this long metal stick that basically takes any of your wireless capsules, the RPW capsules we talked about uh, just a minute ago, and provides you with an XLR output on the bottom. So you can take any of your capsule inventory and make that a wired microphone. Um, so now coupled with this 83, we're making wireless wired again and then making wireless again, right? Um, so why would you do this? Uh, a lot of use cases here, you see a lot of broadcast or ENG crews that are stuck with one stick mic and one capsule, and that capsule may not be the best use case for the scenarios that they're in. This setup would allow you to have a changeable capsule selection as well as making a wired or a wireless microphone with the 83. Um, so it, it gets really versatile in your bag and allows you to be um, adjustable to any of the scenarios that you're faced with um, uh, in the field or in your venue. Um, so that's kind of the 83 workflow with the VPH. The VPH does require phantom power. So when you plug it in wired, uh, you need a phantom power supply to, to activate that VPH. But luckily the 83 does supply that phantom power so you can use it in the function there seen on the right. Accessories to go along with this setup quickly. The UAMS is our universal audio mute switch. Uh, you can thread this in to pretty much any handheld transmitter and any capsule we make, and it gives you a hard mute switch that's at the top. And then the right, you see this thing called WA653. The WA653 was designed mostly for sports and ENG applications where a mic flag is needed. So if you need a little bit more length on your hand mic to put a mic flag there, or if you have someone with very large hands, uh, you can get the WA653. And basically it's just an audio pass through that extends the length of your hand mic um, for a mic flag, uh, kind of like this. I don't know if my camera's up. Yeah, there we go. Um, so if you've got a mic flag that's going on your mic, um, the 653 is a great option to get yourself a little bit more length. Uh, so that's 83 and VPH. Um, I don't want to jump too far ahead, uh, but I'll give you guys just a minute to pop in some questions on that before we move on. Um, and if I don't see anything come through here, I will just keep, keep trucking along. All right. 
Fantastic. So we're going to talk about uh, ADX talk switches. So these have been out for just a little over six months. Uh, and what these are designed to do is to work with an ADX transmitter and give yourself a, uh, a talk switch or a remote talk switch in two applications. So there's two versions. The one that you're seeing here is the 651B. So this is an inline dual threaded collar with a button uh, and it takes a little uh, C watch cell battery for the power. Uh, and essentially what happens here is that your talent can press the button on that stick mic and that is going to reroute your audio from your Axiant Digital Receiver to a couple of places that you have a, uh, you have a choice. So on Axiant Digital, you've got four outputs. You've got uh, XLR and tip ring sleeve output. Then you've got Dante and you've got AES. Uh, so there's a little four port matrix um, inside of Workbench and inside of the Axiant digital receivers themselves that allow you to route your talk switch audio. So essentially if I had my main output coming out of my XLR and my talk switch output coming out of my TRS, when I press this button, the audio from that stick mic is gonna come out the tip ring sleeve output instead of the XLR output. So you can do a lot of things with this. You can create a band talkback for um, a front man or a pastor uh, at a house of worship to allow them to talk to the band or talk to their tech team. Uh, you can create an IFB with a corporate presenter. So they've got a back channel way to say, hey, my PowerPoint's frozen because it's always video's problem. Um, you know, any of those things that you want a, a secondary uh, channel of communication to go somewhere else other than the PA. Um, you can do that. We see this in sports reporters a lot. If they're talking to the truck or the front bench, they're spitting stats up or post interview questions and stuff, and that's not going to broadcast. So they're going to use a talk switch. Um, so this is designed obviously to thread in line between a capsule and a hand mic here. It's important to note that it doesn't have to be used in that application. You can pair this talk switch with any transmitter and it doesn't have to be threaded in. Um, it does have to be within show link distance of that mic. It uses the show link, which is about 300 feet. It's got pretty impressive range. So uh, obviously this was designed to be threaded in. It doesn't have to be used that way. The next talk switch is the 651 FOB. Um, and this is meant to be paired with body pack transmitters, as you can see by the graphic. Uh, but again, it doesn't have to be. You can pair this with a hand mic if you'd like as well. And essentially, you're going to go into the transmitter menu, scroll down to utilities, find the menu that says talk SW, press enter, and then you'll press the button on the talk switch twice. And you're going to pair any talk switch with any ADX transmitter. Uh, so this module is meant to be held in the hand or put in someone's pocket um, and gives them a little bit more of a free workflow if somebody's wearing a body pack and a headset where they can access this talk switch without um, in previous uh, uh, arrangements having to actually reach back and touch the body pack itself. Uh, so that's the 651 FOB talk switch. All right, I feel like we're cruising through this. Hope you guys uh, are enjoying. Yeah, Jason, I got a couple questions about the talk switches. Yes, Brian, fire away. Are they a latching switch or a non latching or is that something that's selectable by the user? It's a great question. Right now they're momentary only. Um, so it's depress is the, the transfer. And then when you release, it's going to, to, to come away. So um, there's a, you can manipulate your output source to kind of make it the, the latching that you would prefer, right? So if it's gonna be the source is mo mostly gonna be going to air, you'd wanna make that your main output and then switch that over. There's some talk about trying to make the momentary or um, latchable, but right now they're, uh, they're just momentary. Great. The 651 FOB, by the way, takes a single AAA battery. Um, the end cap will pop open and you'll slide a AAA battery in there. So we did have a question. Uh, can we explain one more time how to use the talk switch in the body pack, for instance? Yeah, so um, it's the same in a hand mic or a body pack as far as menu structure goes. Um, you'll go ahead and open your ADX transmitter. You're going to press enter to get to the menu. You'll scroll down to get to the utilities menu. You'll open utilities. Uh, you'll go down three or four jogs to uh, a menu that reads talk SW, stands for talk switch. You'll press enter to open the talk switch menu, um, at which point it will say press 
TS2X, press talk switch twice. Um, and so if your talk switch is powered up and within range, you'll press the button on your talk switch two times, whether it's the hand mic button or this body pack one, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, whichever the talk switch that you intend to pair with that transmitter, press that twice. Um, a little green light will flash on this fob and the transmitter will blink and say talk switch paired. Um, and then it's the name of the talk switch will actually appear on the transmitter. At that point, you can exit back out. Uh, and from then on forward, whenever you press that button, um, the green light on the fob will light up. The body pack itself will have a little T that comes up next to the battery readout. Um, and on the receiver itself, when the talk switch is pressed, there'll be a little T that shows up as well. Um, so there's quite a bit of indication that the talk switch is being pressed when it's on and off at all of your metering locations. Additionally, you can do all of this in Workbench if you'd like to as well. Uh, if you're set up with remote control and you can see all of that in wireless Workbench um, from a monitor standpoint. Um, so it works the same menu structure for both the hand mic and the body pack, uh, utilities, talk switch, press the talk switch twice, and it's paired. Uh, you can only pair one talk switch with one transmitter at any time. It's a single, uh, a single pair setup. Great. Awesome. It's important to note here as well, uh, it's got to be an ADX transmitter. It leverages the show link back channel. So if you have an AD transmitter that doesn't have the show link uh, communication protocol, the talk, these talk switches uh, will not function. All right. So we've got SLXD, AD3, the VPH, and talk switches. Should we move on? Yeah. Well, see, you got wow, it's been 50 isn't? minutes. Look at this. This is awesome. Okay, cool. So, uh, last thing in the bag today before we just dive over to kind of like a open Q and a about everything, um, is Q five X product overview. So this one we're pretty stoked about, especially considering the current climate of things. Q five X is a company that's been around for uh, uh, at least 10 years, maybe a little bit longer. And they made, uh, super custom and very niche transmitters for some high tier applications like sports and radio city rockets, um, and thing and the PGA golf cup mics. Um, and these transmitters initially were analog emulation transmitters. So what that means is they would emulate the analog modulation scheme of popular products like sure UHFR or sure Axiant analog. They could also emulate modulation schemes from other product uh, competitors. Uh, and so when the world started to go digital, um, what happened was those analog transmitters became um, not, not usable, but they weren't functional with the new digital receivers that were coming out from multiple manufacturers. So what we did with Sure is we, uh, we entered a partnership with Quantum and Q5X to create an Axiant digital version of some of their most popular transmitters. Um, so. Real quick, Q5X is, I kind of mentioned this, they're the only approved transmitter for the NBA players to wear. They sew them into the jerseys. Um, the NHL referees wear them. They're the golf cup mics at PGA. They're in Radio City, Rockettes, tap shoes. Um, they're all over sports and high tier applications. So they've got quite the name for themselves already. And now we've paired up with them to let them work with Axiom Digital. So uh, the kind of the product suite here is in front of you now. On the left, you see player mic. Uh, this is what was designed for uh, athletes to wear. Um, it's a very thin, flexible rubber housing, um, which is what makes it so safe for a player to wear on their body. Next up is the aqua mic. Um, this is a somewhat smaller, very, very rugged um, aluminum housed watertight sealed, absolutely waterproof transmitter. Um, and then on the right is the mic commander. So. Q5X had invented their own back channel communication, kind of like Showlink, um, quite a few years ago. And so inside of our AD uh, Q5X transmitters, we still use the Quantum Mic Commander back channel control. So the Mic Commander allows you to remote control any parameter of a Q5X transmitter the same way you would with uh, Showlink and ADX. So a little bit deeper here, you can see the flex there on that player mic. Um, it's super flexible, super soft, bends, very rugged. Um, it's the same encryption enabled 256 AES AD transmission. Essentially that is an AD1 transmitter chip inside of a Q5X player mic uh, housing. Uh, 
It's got an internal lithium ion rechargeable battery. You can see the USB a port yeah usb a port there on the left underneath the thumb um, two 10 and 20 milliwatt power levels on this transmitter uh, full remote control available with the mic commander um, and there's two versions of this player mic there's the regular and short and really all that means is that you just get a shorter transmitter but a little bit less battery time um, is what it comes down to so that's the player mic. I actually just sent one of these to a client in California for a demo. Um, we're seeing quite, <laughs> quite a few professional sports leagues that would like to get some better audio from their active players right now. Uh, so it's kind of a hot topic and a great time to be releasing, releasing this product to, to pair with Axiom Digital. Um, next up is the Aqua mic. Um, so I mentioned before, this is a full aluminum waterproof housing, fully submersible up to 10 meters. Um, so you can drop this thing in a pool uh, and you're good to go. Uh, again, the encryption enabled 256 AES transmission, internal lithium ion rechargeable battery, 10 and that's actually a typo there. It's 25 milliwatts, not 250. And there's a removable belt clip on this. You'll notice there's no belt clip on the player mic. Uh, in most of the instances where we see this, it's being sewn into a jersey or worn in a pocket. Um, and that's, that's the reasoning behind that. Uh, real quick, the player mic is a single pin Limo uh, connector there you see on the top. So if you're interested in connecting a lavalier to this, which you're going to have to do if you'd like to get any audio, um, you've got to get a hold of Quantum um, to get a lavalier um, terminated uh, or get an adapter cable for that. Additionally, this Aqua mic uh, is a six pin Limo at the top. Um, and you see the little one is a 2.4 channel antenna on the left. In between that is the six pin Limo connector. Uh, that has to do with waterproof um, connectivity as well as the fact that there's no USB port on this mic because it is waterproof housing. So all of the charging happens through a dongle that goes into that six pin Limo port. Um, and that's what helps it stay completely waterproof. Um, so that is Q5X and Quantum. And I think, unless uh, we've got any questions coming through from the peanut gallery, I'm going to fire this over to Sean again. Um, and hopefully he's not frozen or stuck on this wonderful Monday. It's a case of the Mondays uh, to give us a little virtual hands-on of some of this product um, to, to give you guys a, a better understanding of what it looks like in somebody's hands and and how these things function a little bit sean you there buddy i am fantastic I'm working lovely let me awesome. uh i'll stop this share here cool well i'll show you some of the things that uh, jason just introduced so we've got the ad3 here um you know it's good kind of my hand for reference uh you know it's a good size um like we said we've got the little leather sheath uh that comes with it to give it a little uh belt clip uh, if you want to do it that way um our usb connectivity uh on the bottom there for that shore power um you know it's a nice aluminum housing and in here we've got that sb uh 900 again what uh, jason was talking about with the little clip you know kind of stores up in the uh, upper area here it's a little, little hard to see because it's all black on black um but easy easy to use um again nice really nice display um easy to use buttons on the front of the unit um so it's a pretty rocking little system we just got our samples in and started playing around with it so it's it's pretty cool so we're gonna take that vph uh lock it on there and um yeah, and you've got that nice connection again to turn something into uh, any mic into a you know wireless mic so we've got that that is that vph like we talked about uh, also um you know so we can take a ksm9 head here that i've got or actually sorry i lied ksm8 um so you've got the ability to easily turn that in uses a standard mic clip it's got good weight to it and like jason said it's got a nice uh length to it for being able to run a uh, mic flag um on it um also have one of the uh axiant transmitters here just kind of showing you how that um push to talk button threads in um just easily threads in um, one thing that I really like on it is once you've got it all threaded in, um, 
and your head on, you can actually move the position of the button uh, to make it so it's more comfortable for where, you know, however you're holding the microphone. Um, so it gives you that flexibility. A um, little battery compartment on the back. Uh, you can see it's the little watch battery. So it's easy to get to. You don't have to disassemble anything. So quick, easy turn. Um, does give it a little extra length, but uh, super easy to use and, and um, flexible and again you can kind of rotate it so if you wanted to hit it with a different different hand or something like that so pretty pretty flexible there um and then we've got the uh fob uh, version i really dig this kind of feels like a powerpoint remote in your hand so most uh corporate presenters will be uh very used to this um but it gives it you know it's not super small to get lost so um I really kind of like that one. Like we mentioned, it's a single double A on this guy. So um, just slides right in and super easy to pair. Also has a little hole here. So if you want to put it on a lanyard or something, so it can be attached to like a belt loop or, or something like that. Um, kind of showing some of the uh, player mics. So we've got the, uh, the regular player mic. Again, kind of give you a reference with my hand. Pretty small. Um, it's got that flexibility like we were talking about. Um, charging port on the side. You've got your uh, connection single pin limo for uh, the um, microphone. A regular RF antenna. And then this is the... Um, menu for the mic uh, controller or mic commander i guess i should say for programming uh, we didn't really kind of talk about that but that's the way that you would pro program these you use uh, the mic commander to be able to set all the frequencies and everything like that um, and then this you is can the, it's got full sorry uh, it's got oh. full sync sync capability as well so uh, there is the ir port on the front uh, so you can create the settings on your axiom digital receiver and sync that over um, and there are on and off power swatch buttons there on the front that you can see. Um, so previous quantum transmitters, if anybody here is familiar with them, you actually had to have a mic commander to even get the unit to turn on. It's not the case with these. However, um, it does offer a lot of functionality in terms of RF muting, putting them to sleep, saving battery power, changing frequencies, all the things you want to do on the fly. Um, but if you don't have one, you can get the unit powered on and get an IR sync to your, to your AD uh, receiver. And the short, uh, the, the player mic S, I, I joke, this is for the short players. Um, <laughs> that, this one has the, the flexibility too. So again, it can take a hit, um, which is, they're, they're pretty cool. Um, and then last but not least was that aqua mic. Um, kind of give you again, reference of my hand. It's a little bit beefier uh, of a microphone. Um, and this is that multifunction six pin limo connector uh, we were talking about. So here's the dongle that comes with it to hook up um, the microphone to it. So you've swapped that in there and then you've got your limo connector there. Um, or you've got the um, option to put on this dongle for our USB charging. So it gives you the ability to charge with the, oops, that's not a camera, a little USB, uh, micro USB it looks like. And, and then again, we've got the two RF and then the uh, Mic Commander antenna um, capable. So pretty sealed unit, nice little guy. Got some heft to it. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. The camera, the camera setup worked. I like the fade. It, it was fantastic. It, it finally, it only took me three starts on the restarts on the computer. So yeah, absolutely. So I guess I want to just open it up to if anyone has any questions about SLXD, AD3, uh, VPH, any of the Q5X, feel free to ask them now. Also, if you've got a burning question for any Sure product that you might want to throw to these guys right now. Now's the time. And it's here. Now's the time. There's not a whole lot left. I'm going on vacation tomorrow, everybody. <laughs> All right, we've got one from Jim here. Uh, can you show a visual or give some best case examples of the use of the aqua mic? I'm going to say water polo. There you go. I don't know. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's, it's, I think it's been used in water polo. I'm sure it has. Um, I know it's used um, on, oh boy, what's the name of the league? I'm not going to remember. It's like the the professional speed 
um, sailboat racing teams. Like there's the or the black Oracle boat is like the only one that I remember seeing, but the whole crew on those boats wear those and they put out these, these crazy R for Peters in the middle of the ocean. It's actually a pretty cool setup. Um, but yeah, anything that's any reality show that's, that's on a beach or in water or anytime you're worried about a transmitter getting wet, that's the spot to use it. So, um, baptisms, uh, you know, that's, that's a pretty good, pretty good use case for it. Um, yeah. Any sporting event that involves water. There's my German shepherd, everybody (laughs) just poke the ears up over there working from home 2020. Um, yeah, really anywhere you're worried about a transmitter getting wet and you want it to not fail the next day, uh, the Aquamite comes into play. Um, I know it's, again, I know it's used on those butt races. I'm, oh, Olympics. It's used at Olympics all the time for Olympic swimming matches and things like that when they're doing pre-trials and they allow a microphone to be nearby. So um, I know it's been used on a, a couple of Olympics in some water sports as well. Um, yeah, if you want to go swimming and sing through a PA, <laughs> way to do it right there fire away lewis says uh i like jason's mic stand what is it that's so funny um i actually i had a, a like a proper boom arm um from a manufacturer which will stay unnamed and i had it for like four days and the thing just fell apart and it's a pretty popular one um so this this is just a magic arm clamp that is often used for, I used it for antenna placement when I was out in the field. Um, So it's just got your standard kind of clamp around the side. And then there's three ball joints, one here, one in the middle, one at the top, and a threaded input on top. So I uh, improvised from my broken boom arm to this magic arm that I have. And uh, it's definitely not gonna break, hyper rugged. So it works well. Great question. Great, yeah. All right, so we've got another one from Jim here, kind of awesome. think, going away from some of the wireless stuff. But uh, okay. do you mind talking about a Sure lapel mic that will help be a lot better sounding on Zoom calls versus a good Logitech camera mic, uh, where the mic is not so close to a person speaking price range? Again, he says, no worries if this is off subject. Um, but... Uh, maybe we want to talk about sure motive series real quick, something for, um, zoom calls. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So motive, um, is kind of our line of USB C interfaces and or USB C mics, USB C, not USB C USB mics, excuse me. Um, so motive, uh, has a couple of products. Sean's got the MV 51 in his hand as do I. So this is the MV 51. Um, this is a USB, um, input with an interface and a built-in microphone, um, as well as, uh, kind of a little panel here to give you some options. So there's a mute button, there's a headphone output on the back, so you can monitor directly out of this, um, as well. Uh, there's a volume up and down slider. This is all touch. And then there's five different modes, speech, singing, instrumental, um, loud and flat. Um, and this can also be paired with our motive app. So if you go to an app store on an iOS device and look for sure motive audio, um, if you plug that in, there's a, a quite a few other, um, parameters that you can set and change on that microphone. There's a couple other products. So this is going to look a little bit familiar to you, but this is basically the ba- base plate the controller. Um, and this is the MVI. So it's just the MV interface. So this has single XLR and a headphone amp on the back. Um, so you could take any hardwired microphone, plug it into this. And you mentioned the lapel. So if you want to get a Twinplex TL47 with an XLR preamp on it and run that over to your shirt uh, and then plug it into this MVI, uh, that would give you the proper preamp. It would give you the interface. It's got a headphone out so you can monitor through uh, a pair of Shure headphones or even a pair of 425s. Um, and then this is also can be plugged into the mode of app to give yourself some EQ, some compression, some roll off. There's a, a couple other functionalities that don't fit on that front panel that function in the application itself. Um, I guess while we're on this topic, there's also this, this is the MV 88 plus 
So this is a, a tripod mount or a handheld mount. It's meant to put an iPhone in this slot. Uh, and then this is meant to plug into your iPhone. And it's a stereo condenser mic that sounds fantastic if you're trying to capture a live band or capture your writing session or do some live stream with, with a larger set, larger room of audio. Um, again, tons of app controls in the Motive app to give you uh, EQ, compression, roll off, uh, and a bunch of settings. And you can save all those settings in the Motive app. Um, so specifically uh, a lapel mic, um, I would look at if you're, you know, if you're in a quiet space, I would say the Twinflex TL 47 with the XLR preamp and an MVI interface. Um, and you could get a pretty, pretty good sounding lapel mic or, uh, Sean, what are you wearing over there? I am wearing, uh, the Twinplex head mic. Oh yeah. TH 53 baby. Yeah. So there you go. See here. It's a take it off, talk into it. <laughs> it's a dual ear setup, um, pretty lightweight, uh, easy to use. So uh, I'm going into an Axiant system uh, and then into my camera switcher uh, for my, my audio. I don't know if I'm the shining example of uh, audio and video today because of my issues, but you, great, you know. <laughs> yeah, you sound great, absolutely. Um, I've got a question from Jeff here, and I think this is about the SLXD launch. Um, is SLX been discontinued, and also ULXS are those still going to be um, are those still active products now with SLXD? Yeah, those are in the uh, twilight uh, of their life now. Um, I don't know if they've been officially discontinued yet, but uh, they're they're pretty close here. So. They are not officially discontinued, but uh, I like Twilight of their life uh, <laughs> sure. saying, yeah, I wouldn't imagine they're, they're uh, around for much longer. Great. And Lewis has a question. Um, he had asked before about his um, wireless and in-ear bands. Um, oh, yeah. Yep. And so maybe we can help him out with this live here. Uh, he asked, do I need an RF analyzer to check frequencies available or can that be done with my computer in a wireless system? <laughs> Uh, yeah, great question. So, um, you know, if you're, if you're using SLXD, um, it's obviously got that scan and deploy function that, uh, that Sean so graciously showed us. Keep in mind, that's only going to coordinate SLXD microphones in and of themselves. Um, if you're using ULXD or Axion Digital, um, you can hook that up to Workbench um, and take a scan off of those receivers. Uh, you can also take a scan um, inside of them themselves. Uh, does QLXD will as well? Yes, QLXD yeah. will take a scan as well, yep. Um, so yeah, if you've got um, one of our receivers that has a scan function built in, you can plug that into wireless workbench, which if you don't know is the free software that you can download from sure.com. Um, and it's a full control software for most of our products um, that allow you to coordinate and input scans and visualize those scans uh, in a way that would allow you to uh, then coordinate frequencies properly to do that. Uh, you could also, like you mentioned, get an external spectrum analyzer, um, which is probably a pretty pricey way to go about things. Uh, but if you have one of the sure products, you absolutely connect it to a computer, get workbench, and you can import a scan um, into that software. So probably a great time to maybe quickly pitch. Yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> um, we have also planned a uh, future webinar here uh, to talk about wireless workbench. And I think even in a crude manner for you, Lewis, um, wireless workbench does have the capability of using your zip code to see what DTV stations are currently available. And that can give you a pretty good uh, idea of what frequency bands might be better to use um, ones that are less populated um, with uh, t TV channels in your region here. Um, going to take a couple more questions before we wrap up here. Um, one from Joel, he's asking, does 83 only work on Axiant systems? Yes. Correct. Yep. So that would be only on the 84 oh. dual and quad, uh, receivers. Correct. Yep. yep. Axiant digital only. And we've got one more question here about will SLXD get full wireless workbench integration in the future? 
I see a couple smiles. Sure is always working on new and exciting things. Um, I, I, I would like to, I would like to think so. I hope so. Um, I, it's something that is being talked about. Um, so it's, it's not off the table. It's not on the table. I can't confirm or deny, um, that it's happening. Uh, I think there's, there's some good reasons to do it. And also the, the platform that they built, uh, that we built, I should say, um, to, to make those units connect through a switch and run its own frequency coordination is pretty impressive. Um, and there's a lot of tools built into the front of that receiver. So, um, it, it, you, you mentioned the word full. So I'm assuming that you are already up to speed on the integration that it does have in wireless workbench. But for those of you that are not, um, there is an update to wireless workbench that just came out not too long ago that gives you the ability to input XS, SLXD into your coordination see the bands, um, uh, coordinate around it, things like that. Uh, but at this point, it does not physically connect to SLXD from a control and monitor standpoint. Great question. That's great. So with that, I'm going to, I think it's time for us to wrap up. So I'm going to share my screen here. Um, first, uh, thanks everyone for sticking around right now as well as everyone that was able to attend today's webinar. Um, but thank you, Sean and Jason, for taking the time to spend with us and our customers today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Sean, appreciate it, buddy. And uh, <laughs> a, a big thank you to, to Matt Clara with our TC Furlong oh, yes. for helping uh, facilitate the technical side of things in the background here. We really appreciate it, Matt. Uh, as also, I'm going to, I'm going to throw this one out there. If, if anyone does, uh, want, you know, demos or anything like that, you know, definitely reach out to the TC Furlong guys and we can help facilitate uh, getting you gear to, to check out and, uh, you know, during these hard times when you can't just kind of run out and go look at something. So definitely we appreciate the, the virtual, uh, demonstrations you guys are able to help out with during these times. Yep. Um, as, as, I, as Jason mentioned, uh, we're, we're actually planning our next webinar here for September 8th, where we're gonna talk about Wireless Workbench 613, the newest release, um, some of the cool updates that came through, especially with SLXD, and probably give, give away some, uh, some secrets, some tips and tricks of uh, some advanced features that we like to use in Workbench as well. Um, so we'll, we will be sending out an invitation to everyone that has uh, signed up for the webinar today. So be on the lookout for that. Um, so lastly, uh, if you'd like a quote for any of these products or have any other additional technical questions for sure, uh, or for us, please feel free to email us at sales at tcfurlong.com. Uh, there's also a brief survey that's going to be linked on the Zoom exit page where you can have a chance to enter additional questions there as well. We'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. So with that being said, we hope you found value in today's presentation. And thanks again for everyone joining us. Thanks, everybody. Thank thanks, you, guys. Everyone.